Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mother steals a wedding cake. For clarity, at my wedding, we had two cakes. The pretty little wedding cake and then she cake for everyone else to eat. This is from a couple years back, but will always stick with me. It was our wedding day. Nothing fancy, which was perfect, and everything was going smoothly. I looked gorgeous in my dress. My new hubby looked amazing, perfect weather, etc. We had an outdoor wedding in the afternoon, and after the ceremony, we did the cut the cake bit. Everyone cheered, and we invited people to get started in the food line. Then our photographer pulled us away to get some last pics before the sun started going down. We were gone for maybe 10 minutes, then came back over for the cake. My best friend, who works as a head pastry chef at a nice restaurant, made it for us. A one-tier red velvet and buttercream dream. We get back, and the entire cake is gone. I can't believe it. I look around and see entitled mother sitting at a table with her six. Yes, six kids, each with giant pieces of cake. And I mean giant. The entire cake split into seven pieces for her and the kids, and they're all wolfing through it fast. Hey, um, did you take all the cake? New hubby and I haven't even had any yet. Yes, you did. I saw you cut the cake earlier. Well, yes, we cut it. But didn't you notice none was missing? We had to go take a couple more photos before the sun went down, and we didn't even get to try it yet. Look, my kids were hungry, and they're not eating whatever that is. She gestures to the catered food and the sheet cake that the restaurant I work for donated as a wedding present that's on a table on the other side of everyone. I'm trying to be patient and not cause a scene at my own wedding. Look, I get that, but you probably should have brought them snacks if you didn't want them eating the food here. Now I don't get to have that memory with my new husband. Didn't it occur to you to ask when everyone else was getting food from over there? Whatever. That's not really what this day is all about, and honestly, you should be grateful that we came at all. Do you even know how hard it is to get six kids out the door for meaningless little things like this? At this point, new husband has overheard what's happening and comes over to jump in. But not only has he heard, so did my family and best friend. If there are two people in the world you don't mess with, it's my sister and my best friend. Imagine two minuscule, neither's over five foot one, balls of fury that are now flying over. Entitled Mother is now looking horrified as all of them are in her face yelling. She turns absolutely beet red before huffing. See if I ever come to one of you people's weddings again. You people, sigh. Entitled Mother tries to simultaneously grab all six kids at the same time to get them to her car fast. My sister grabbed a slice of the sheet cake and threw it at the Entitled Mother, hitting her in the back of the head with it as Entitled Mother stomped away. Is it bad that I still kinda giggle thinking of Entitled Mother awkwardly leaning as far forward as she could on the drive home, trying not to let frosting drip down the back of her neck? Anyway, we haven't heard from her again. Although, I did get a text about a week later from her oldest kid apologizing for her mom's behavior and for eating all my wedding cake. The rest of the wedding was lovely. What I want to know is, did your photographer get a picture of your friend throwing cake at that entitled mother's head? Because if so, that's definitely the picture I would hang above my mantelpiece. Our next Reddit post is from Urukati. My sister was in an abusive relationship for six years. Unfortunately, like many women that went through the same thing, she was manipulated by her ex-boyfriend and didn't have enough self-esteem to stop the abuse. She didn't think it was abuse until things got really ugly. Fortunately, the marriage ended last week and now she's in much better shape and headed towards a better life. After the breakup, my sister reunited the family to tell us about it. This is when the entitlement took place. My sister said, Everyone, I have important news. I broke up with my ex-husband. My entitled dad says, What? Why? What happened? My sister proceeds to tell the story of a six-year abusive relationship with a lot of verbal and even physical abuse. Well, okay, but what about me? What do you mean, dad? Well, you still have to give me a grandson. You're 33 years old and you won't be able to bear healthy children much longer. Dad, how can you say something like that to me? I've been through hell and back and all you can think about is your grandchild that doesn't even exist? Yes, 
I gave you life, a proper education, house, food, everything you wanted. The least you can give us is a grandchild. My untitled mom says, Yeah, I agree. We're very impatient. All I want is a grandchild. I'm not having a child with a man like my ex-husband. I need to find the right man, the one that will love and cherish me. Well, you better do that soon. I'm tired of waiting. I swear, both you and your brother are the most ungrateful children I could have been cursed with. You cannot make me have a child. It's my body. I'll have a child whenever I want to, not when you want. Unfortunately, you're right. I can't. I want to have a grandchild so bad, you have no idea. If the child was a boy, maybe I can shape him into a real man, unlike your brother. For context, I'm gay and my father hates me for it. I only went to the family reunion because my sister really insisted for me to go. The fight got really ugly from there on. I backed up my sister the entire time and we ended up storming out of the house. Both of us haven't talked to our parents since that event. My dad is such a horrible and selfish person. I have other stories about him that I'll maybe tell someday. I'm just happy that my sister is better and now has a chance to find the right person for her. So if the entitled father raised his first son to be straight and he turned out gay, then by that father's own logic, doesn't that mean that he's a terrible father and has no business raising a grandchild because he might turn that one gay too? Now, to be clear, I think this father is completely wrong and an idiot. I'm just pointing out that by his own logic, he's a complete idiot. Our next Reddit post is from Obzi. A bit of backstory relevant to the events. I'm a transgender man, had my top surgery a little over a year ago. Yay! However, for personal and medical reasons, I decided to not go through hormone replacement therapy. Because of that, and the fact that my height is around 4 foot 9, I'm often perceived as a teen or young adult. I'm 35 years old. So now to the story. I was hanging out at my favorite coffee shop. I always stay on the smoking area as I am, duh, a smoker. Anyways, the law over here states that to be able to stay at a smoking area, you need to be a legal age to smoke, 18 years old. Keep in mind though, this law is not as harsh and strict as it is in other places like the US. A bit relevant also, I've been a regular at this coffee place for at least 10 years. I know most of the waiters by name. Karen enters with a kid around the age of 5 and invades two tables. A bit rude since the smoke area only has six tables, but whatever. One for her and the other for her son, who proceeds to take out some crayons and a coloring book. I ignore all this as I'm lost in the book I'm reading. At some point, I do a crazy thing such as light a smoke in a smoking area. And a few seconds later, I hear the dreaded sound of Karen clearing her throat. I ignore her and the next exchange occurs. Hey, young man, listen to me. Yeah? Don't you think it's a bit rude you're blowing smoke all over my son? I point to the big sign on the wall that says, Smoking Area, 18 plus only. Do you even know how to talk? Are you an R word? Answer me! You're too young to be smoking anyways. Whatever, lady. I proceed to take headphones out of my backpack and plug them in. The Karen keeps speaking, but by the miracle of technology, I can't make out a word she says. So I figured that was it. A few minutes later, I notice some commotion around me and again hear the sound of dear Karen's banshee howls. I look up and see Karen arguing with one of the waiters and pointing at me. So of course, I take off my headphones to hear what that was all about. You have to do something. He's clearly underage and blowing smoke all over my son. Don't think for a second I won't call the police on this. The waiter said, Ma'am, as I already told you, I don't need to ask that young man's ID as he's been coming here for years. I don't care. I know the law and my rights. He needs to show his ID to stay in a smoking area. She's kind of right, I'll concede. I lost interest at this point and plugged myself back into my music. After a few futile minutes of arguing with the Karen, the waiter taps my shoulder. Hey man, I'm really sorry. Could you just take out your ID so this lady can move on? I take out my ID from my back pocket, which still has my dead name as even though changing your birth certificate is legal and relatively cheap in Mexico City, I would have to spend around a thousand US dollars to get all my paperwork. Education degrees, passport, driver's license, you get the drift. Changed and I spent most of my savings on my surgery. Okay ma'am, you can see that he's shown me a valid form of identification. Now you have your kid out here and- Let me see that! 
This is clearly fake. This is a woman's name. How dare you impersonate a woman? Ma'am, the ID is real and you need to give it back to him right now. No, I'm calling the police right now so they can confiscate this and question him about why he's carrying a fake ID. That is a felony. Now you have a lot to explain, young man. If only you could have been polite and not smoke all over my son. Lady, I don't owe you an explanation, but for the sake of ending this and me going back to my book, I'm a transgender man. I was born a woman, but I'm not one, and my ID still has to reflect my gender identity. All settled, good. Now give me back my ID. Karen's face went from normal to red in less than three seconds, visibly disturbed. You're a freak. How dare you stand so close to my child. You're going to corrupt him, she says to the waiter. Transgender? How dare you allow transgender sexual freaks here? The kid says, Mommy, what's transgender mean? Knowing that my afternoon is already spoiled and thinking, what the hell, let the world burn right now. I say, I'm a transgender, that means I was born like a girl, but inside, I always knew I'm a boy. So I changed my name and how I look, and I'm very happy right now. Don't talk to my child. Don't even dare. Mommy, that means I can be a girl? Now, I don't think the kid is trans or anything. This is actually a pretty common question when explaining little kids about trans people. How dare you? You're evil and you've just corrupted my son. I demand compensation now that my child is ruined. Now, as you can imagine by then, we had a pretty small crowd watching over, which eventually got the manager's attention. The manager said, what's going on out here? Ma'am, I'll need to ask you to lower your voice and moderate your language. She used a choice of cuss words and offensive slang to refer to me, but I won't even dignify her enough to reproduce them. I will talk as loud as I want. It's outrageous what happens here. Are you in charge? Yes, ma'am. I'm the manager of this coffee place, and if you don't lower your voice, I'll have to ask you to leave. Now, can you explain to me why you're yelling at my staff and customers? I'm a member of the Family League. The Family League in Mexico is a right-wing association that fights against LGBT plus rights in general, abortion, single moms, and yeah, everything that isn't your traditional mommy, daddy, and kids family. I'll have this place shut down in a heartbeat if I don't get compensation right now. And exactly what should we compensate you for? That freak made my boy transgender. You allow a sexual predator to be here and corrupt young minds. And again, how does that entitle you to any compensation? I'll have to pay for therapy for my son now. Maybe even ask my congregation to pray over him. That costs money. This is reckless endangerment. Those freaks should be kept away from innocent, God-fearing people. Some male customer said, Come on, lady, stop. You've been drumming our ears for 10 minutes now with your ignorance and transphobia. If anyone's entitled to compensation, it's us. I agree with him, ma'am. Please leave the premises. This is not the end of things. I'll have your license in no time. She grabs her kid and leaves. The waiter blocks her way. There's still the small matter of the bill, ma'am, and give me the ID back. I didn't even get to drink my coffee. It's already cold. I shouldn't have to pay. That sounds like your problem, but if you want, we can call mall security in no time. Let them settle this, and in the meanwhile, also let them write a report of you having your son that is clearly underage in a smoking area. Now, this kind of complaint may lead to the equivalent of Child Protective Services involved if mall security passes the report to the police. Karen is defeated at this point, which is such a wonderful view. She threw my ID to the ground, got her kid, and started leaving. As she left, I couldn't help myself. Probably not my brightest moment, but yeah, I was pissed. I yell, hey kiddo, remember, you can be anything you want to be. The Karen huffs and puffs and gives me the finger as she walks away. Okay, so greetings from the magical Mexico City. Thanks for letting me vent and for reading this, and much love to all my trans folks out there. Stay strong, and don't let the transphobes get to you. This Karen bringing her child to a smoking section and demanding he put out the cigarette is like taking a kid to a strip club and telling all the ladies to put their clothes back on. Our next Reddit post is from Tartar Buildup. So, I have Asperger's syndrome, an autistic spectrum condition, and I also suffer from anxiety, which often manifests as a stutter. 
I'm usually a very talkative and upbeat person, but it often takes me a while to actually get my words out. When I'm trying to order at a restaurant, usually the staff are very patient and sympathetic. I get self-conscious pretty easily. So entitled dad comes along while I'm ordering food at a coffee shop. He's standing behind me with his little kid as I'm trying to order. Stutter kicks in and the lady at the counter is pleasantly helping me along. Come on, just spit it out for F's sake. We've been waiting ages. I try not to look at Entitled Dad and continue with my own business. I briefly glance down at his kid who's starting to look extremely uncomfortable. My kid's autistic, you know. We can't wait this long. Yeah, so am I. So m maybe you sh should be a little m m more understanding. Just hurry the F up, mate. S -s -s stop being an attention s -s seeker. I was kinda shocked he was just casually swearing in front of his little kid. What a great example to set, right? So I continue trying to finish giving my order so I can finally step aside and let this dickweed have his turn once I've paid for mine. I'm feeling pretty self-conscious again now and I'm starting to feel myself about to cry. I have very strong emotional reactions to the smallest confrontations. I think the lady serving me probably saw the look in my eyes. Now, I've never met any of the employees here, but the woman on the cash register is, and always will be, my hero. After he tried ordering, she began asking him loads of unnecessarily specific questions about what sauces and extras he wanted. But she was putting on a really exaggerated stutter. Do you want anything else? He was standing there, trying to get her to spit it out as well, but she was taking like a full minute to say each sentence. <laughs> you could see the cogs turning in Entitled Dad's head. Entitled Dad's kid was kind of laughing by now. I saw the register lady shoot him a little smile. Right, you can stop taking the piss. Right the F now. I'm s s s s s s s s sorry, s s s s s s s s sir. I have have a speech impediment. I got my food and hid it for a table, but I had a perfect view of Entitled Dad trying to place his order and pay very slowly. It took no less than 15 minutes to finally get his order in. It was a very slow day. The kid looked happy when he was given a huge lump of marshmallows for having to wait. I like to pretend that Entitled Dad got spit in his coffee. I tipped the waitress like 20 pounds after that. I didn't even have to get revenge. A kind-hearted waitress punished that git for me. That was r slash choosing beggars and if you like this video then please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow. That was r slash entitled parents and if you like this video then don't forget to subscribe because I put out new reddit videos every single day.